What's going on YouTube? I hope you guys are having a great great day today. It's gonna be a fun day That's all I'm gonna say is we got some new content coming to the channel and I gotta get out of here before I uh, fall off this bed and break my legs So as you can see we got some MDDP orders headed out Want to get these off to the post office right now so I can get these out first thing for people who want them before Christmas Oh, yeah, she's shut She's good. The real question is, can you shut the tailgate or put a strap down without saying, that's not going anywhere? Because every single time I find myself going, that's not going anywhere. I'm pretty sure it's like a guy thing. I don't know, maybe I'm just weird, who knows? But nonetheless, let's get this truck started. Get it warmed up. Key on, make sure we're on tune one. Makes it a little easier on the engine starting up there. Nice and easy. You know why it's nice and easy? Because I plug it in every single night right here. Tuck that back in there, put this off to the side, just like that. We're actually headed off to work on a Cummins. I think this will be the first Cummins on the YouTube channel, which I'm pretty excited about. They're super, I'm not gonna say easy, but pretty easy to work on. <laughs> it's a treat. You start working on a Duramax all the time, and then you go to one of those, and it's like, wow. Now I wanna get these dropped off, like I said, first thing this morning to make sure that uh, it gets kind of a day ahead and delivery time is not a day behind because of the uh, processing time and all that stuff. But if you do wanna check out what exactly is back there, a lot of those are oil filter conversion kits for the Duramax. This truck right here has one, the LML has one on. It lets you run this giant, massive uh, 1R1807 cat oil filter, which is the filters that are on the big rigs on the road, like the C15 cats, 3408s, all that stuff. And it's pretty freaking awesome of a filter. Uh, great internal woving, all that good stuff. I won't bore you with the details, but you just take my word that it's a quality filter. It's made in the USA. That's all I should have to say there. But if you do want to check it out, the website is www. I don't even have to put that. That's like what the infomercial say. mddperformance.com. That's where you can check them out at. So let's get off to the post office. This is the truck we were working on today. Like I said earlier, it is a Cummins and it is a 6.7, 2014, I believe. Super, super clean. I'll be honest, I'm not a single cab guy, but this thing is just so clean and it's just, it's done so right that I, I would honestly drive this thing without any doubt. Uh, G56, so that is a manual. For these trucks, these 6.7 Cummins, the newer ones, pretty much have three trans options. You have the Eisen, which is the uh, option you can get with a one ton and up. You have the 68 RFE, which you can get in any of the, you know, the one ton, three quarter ton, any of those, which is a little bit of the weaker of the two. And then lastly, you have your manual, which is the G56, which this truck has right here. And what we are doing on this rig today is ARP head studs. So you can see we pretty much just got the valve cover off. That's about it so far. We're gonna get this whole wiring harness out of here. This comes off as one piece with all the wires and everything. That'll be nice and easy. And then we'll take the rocker assemblies off, these two right here, each of them. After that, we'll be down to pretty much the head bolts where we can go ahead and start taking them out. We are gonna do this truck one by one. I wouldn't always recommend doing them one by one. And if you're curious what that even means, it means basically there's 26 in here, 26 head bolts. You take one head bolt out and then you put one stud in. You never really have to pull the head completely off, get it machine decked and all that stuff. But for this thing, 40,000 miles, it's, I mean, if you were saying like 80,000 miles, I'd say I wanna get this thing taken off. I wanna get it checked and you know, get it decked and everything, make sure it's straight. But 40,000 miles, one by one is no problem. Now the torque specs on this, we went with the, uh, or the customer went with the ARP 2000s. You have a couple options when you do head studs, you can do the 2000s or you can do the 625s. 625s are more expensive, you can torque them down 150 foot pounds. These right here, you can torque down to I believe 125. And you'll notice there's gonna be some that are longer than others. Like I'm bring them out, like this one right here. Uh, actually not, the, yeah, that bottom one there. See how it sticks out more? That's gonna be the one that goes on the exhaust side over here. So it's gonna be the six longer ones there. Use your ARP lube. This is very, very important to use this. Give your washers to go with it. And then lastly, you have your bolts themselves, or the nuts that'll go onto the stud. Here is the torque specs, or the torque diagram right here. You're gonna start with number one, especially if you're doing one by one, you're gonna pull the first one out, and then put your ARP in. Then you're gonna go to number two, three, four, five, and do all that until you've done all 26 to 100 foot-pounds, because factory spec on that, this truck right here, is 100 foot-pounds on the head bolts. So, 
we're gonna take it all to 100 so it's all even, and then we're gonna take the next step to 112. We're gonna do this incremental, not too crazy. We don't wanna warp anything here. So some guys would just do 100 and then 125, but you know we wanna take small incremental steps to make sure that nothing goes wrong here. But here's a better look at the valve train itself like I was saying earlier. You have your injector right here, valve bridge, valve bridge, valve springs. And on the other end here you have your push rods. You can see the orange on them. And then uh, we're going to adjust valve lash to this right here. There's a little Allen underneath all that oil there. So this should right here tell you how important it is to change your oil. If you don't already take your maintenance very seriously, this should definitely explain it for you. Look how much, I mean, this whole valve train literally lives off of this stuff. You can see how it literally just soaks itself in that. So if you aren't doing your oil changes every three to 5,000 miles, depending what oil and what kind of driving you do, definitely should be a uh, good reason why right here. process for installing the stud itself we just kind of laid out the torque sequence right here to make sure we have that on hand so we did we're on number one right now and what we do is we put a little paint marker like on the top and bottom to show where the stud is at so that way when you're <coughs> tightening it you're, you you know you're tightening the nut and the stud isn't sliding down in there and to torque them we're gonna use this bad boy we're gonna put them down to 100 foot pounds at first like I was saying and then we'll do 112 and then eventually hit the 125 mark. So you can see the sanding he's doing right there. We use kind of a drill bit as an end mill to push back in there and mill it out. And right here is actually what it used to look like. And now that's how we have it. You notch out that little corner right there so that the nut from the head stud can sit down in there because the head bolt, it, you know, clears it, but the stud won't. So installing this stud right here, basically you run it down the bottom by hand. And after that, what you'll do is you'll take a paint marker and mark that that's dead bottom. Then you will take that and just back it off half a turn. So you know exactly where half a turn is going to be. Just like that. And that's so you know that you're not tightening this stud into the block. And that's taking part of the torque. You want all the torque to come from this nut pushing down on the head. So next we'll take the washer that's already lubricated. We'll drop that down onto it. And then after that, we'll take our nut and spin that on top of the washer that also has the ARP lubricant on the bottom. And it's gonna wanna spin on you. So what you do is you can take that Allen key again, hold it on there, and then you can go ahead and just run your nut right onto the stud here. Now to get it tight enough to start torquing on it where that stud isn't going to slip, I was just taking a ratchet wrench and just kind of getting it snug enough to the point where it'll stay in place. And after that, we'll go ahead and we'll throw the torque wrench on it and then get our first torque down to 100 foot-pounds. So that ended up coming out to 100.2 foot-pounds, and that one is done for the first round of torquing. All the head bolts have been removed from the truck, so now they're all replaced with head studs. Like I said, we did them one by one by one.
we are adjusting the valve less. So the process to this is, well, let's break it down for the basics first. The bigger the two rockers is the exhaust and the smaller one is the intake. Now when doing this, you wanna have 20 thou on exhaust and 10 thou on intake. So you can see Jordan playing with the feeler gauge right down here. Just trying to find the right amount of play. You should just feel just a light amount of pull when you come out with it. And you use the Allen head right here to adjust up and down to give you more or less play. Once you find it where you like it, you do what he's doing right now. You tighten up that 13 millimeter wrench and that locks it right where it is. So before this, we got the engine in top dead center. It says on the harmonic balancer, you basically look for that straight up. We used the uh, bolt off of the harmonic balancer to get the crank rotated to get it at top dead center. And when it is, you can go ahead and do intake 124 and exhaust 135. Then we're gonna rotate the engine again to get the rest of them. And then after that, our valve lash will be set. Like I said, we're running 10 thousandths on the intake and 20 thousandths on the exhaust. And the factory spec on this is actually 26 on the exhaust, but with everything done here, it's just better to run it at 20 thousandths, make a little bit more heat for the uh, setup we have going on right here. And the advantages of that is first off, it's a lot, I shouldn't say a lot, it's a little bit quieter. You're gonna notice it's not as rattly, just seems more smooth. And all around, it's just a better running engine when you get those valves in check, especially if you have like an older, say 24 valve. Don't think this is just for the 6.7 Cummins. This is all the Cummins years. Uh, it's always something great to do, especially if you just got the truck, you don't know when the last guy did it. So I, it will not hurt to just pop your valve cover off. I mean, it is just stupid easy on these trucks right here to go ahead and check it for the comments. You just pop it off, get a set of feeler gauges, nice quality set, and then I go to town, nothing too crazy, doing an afternoon and you'll be glad you did. You good? Did forget to mention, anytime you work on someone else's vehicle, this is always my rule of thumb. Always put tape along the fenders, the grill, all that stuff. We had a whole guard up here to protect it. Cause you know how it is, you, you reach over the edge and even just your shirt rubbing against that is enough. If you have like a piece of, if you have metal shaving in your shirt, gets into the paint. So do yourself a favor, protect that all right there. Especially on these when it sticks out like that. But we are actually gonna get this thing uh, out and take a test drive on it now. And that's pretty much where we'll leave off on this video. Um, we're just gonna drive it around, get up the temperature, a couple things we're gonna check when we get back. Make sure that no, there's no pressure in here. We're gonna check the upper rad hose, make sure we don't have really stiff hose that indicate signs that that head gasket has pushed and moved itself and uh, allowed exhaust gases into the cooling system, which pressurizes that, puts soot in the tank, the coolant reservoir back there. Nice couple things to look out for. The biggest treat ever to work on these trucks, like I was saying earlier, it's so much easier than a Duramax and definitely easier than a Power Stroke, that's for sure. And uh, like it's something simple like this, this will pretty much just help the customer get a peace of mind that you know, he doesn't have to worry about his head gasket being pushed in the future. Happened to one of his other trucks, so now this one, peace of mind, you don't have to worry about it with those ARP studs in there. The turbochargers on these trucks, sometimes they malfunction, they have a little issue where they create too much cylinder pressure, and that's what ends up pushing the head gasket, just being tuned on this truck. So, with that being said guys, thank you very, very much for watching the video. I greatly appreciate it. If you wanna do me a huge favor, help the channel out, give it a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button if you haven't, cause there is tons more Commons content coming along here soon with the future. So thanks again for watching guys, and we'll see you in the next video.